This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Find the link in the description below. Bones are some of the coolest structures in the human body. They provide structure, support, and protect your vital organs. But even despite all of that, bones still don't get the credit that they deserve. And that's because bones provide even more functions that are essential for your health, wellness, and frankly, for you to stay alive. Now these functions can't actually be seen on the outside of the skeleton. We're gonna have to go to the inside of bone to discuss this further. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. Look at the inside of real human bone tissue where we're gonna see structure and architecture that rivals anything us humans have ever created, as well as see a tissue inside that is essential for you to stay alive. So let's do this. So as you can see, I have two skeletons behind me, Jeffrey the skeleton, as well as Cornelius the skeleton. Now each of these guys wanted me to be extremely clear about how they were introduced. Jeffrey wants all of you to know that he is an all natural, real human skeleton, as opposed to his sibling here that's a fake plastic skeleton. Now, to be fair to Cornelius, he doesn't describe himself that way. He wants all of you to know that he is a perfect synthetic replica of a human skeleton. The sibling rivalry never ends. Unfortunately for Cornelius, we gotta use a real skeleton because we're going inside the bones, so time for the roll of shame. Don't worry, your time will come. All skeletal sibling rivalry and joking aside, we're extremely lucky to have a real human skeleton in our lab. So let's use Jeffrey and his bones to talk about a few key points as we move to the inside of bone tissue. So if we were to look at the outside surface of all of Jeffrey's bones, of my bones and your bones, and if I zoom in so I can actually touch the outside surface of a bone, the outside surface is referred to as compact bone. And if you were to look at like a textbook definition of compact bone, it would say something like the dense outer portion of all of your bones. Now, we refer to density because there's another type of bone tissue deep or underneath compact bone, which is less dense. And we'll talk about that bone tissue soon enough. But compact bone, even though it's the more dense version of bone tissue, its thickness can still vary dramatically throughout the skeleton, especially when we talk about the long bones of the skeleton, which make up the majority of your limb bones, like your humerus, or where we've zoomed in to the femur down here. Now, the end of a long bone is referred to as the epiphysis. Now, the reason I brought up that fancy pants name, the epiphysis, or the end of the long bone, is because at the ends, or at the epiphysis, the compact bone is paper thin, so not very thick. But when we compare that to the shaft of a long bone, which is referred to as the diaphysis, the compact bone gets much, much thicker, which makes sense so it can deal with the forces throughout the shaft of that bone. But I can't show you the thickness on Jeffrey because we haven't cut into that bone, but we have another dissection here that I wanna show you. So this is a lower leg dissection, and this is your shin bone that we truly refer to as the tibia, and I'm touching the compact bone, again, that outside surface of the bone. Now, a quick little reference here, you can see a difference from here to there. This tissue is called periosteum, and I had to remove it from the compact bone. Periosteum is a dense, irregular connective tissue that wraps the outside of your compact bone. It's a really cool tissue. It has blood vessels, nerve endings, and even bone cells in there that can help maintain the outside surface of the bone um, just for regular maintenance, or even if there's damage like a fracture. Now, speaking of a fracture, if any of you have ever had a fracture or a bone break, you'll tear and damage the periosteum. And remember, just kind of a cool FYI, the periosteum had nerve endings or even pain receptors in there. So when you break that bone and also tear the periosteum, that periosteum is responsible for a lot of that pain you feel with bone damage. So if you've ever broken a bone, throw that in the comments, let us know what type of bone break you've had because I'm sure some of you've had some crazy ones. But back to the compact bone here. What you can see right here is we cut a hole inside there. And if I roll it towards the camera there, you might get an idea that it is definitely thicker than just the paper thin compact bone that we found at the ends of the bones. And I'll show you another dissection in a second that'll show that even better. But this dissection shows you how cool the long bone shaft is because it's actually, even though the, outs even though the outside of it is thicker, the whole shaft is still hollow. And that hollow tube that I'm sticking the probe in there that you can see is called the medullary cavity. Now the medullary cavity, we kind of refer to it as doing two things. One, it helps reduce the weight of the bone. You don't need to have compact bone just fully, full thickness throughout the whole length of the shaft. So it does reduce the weight. But also you see something inside 
called yellow bone marrow. Now this particular dissection of the lower leg doesn't have any yellow bone marrow in it because we removed it from the tibia. But when I first did make this hole, there was definitely yellow bone marrow that came out. But I do have another dissection that we'll take a look at, a cut through the upper limb, and we're gonna look down into the humerus to take a look at this yellow bone marrow. So let's trade dissections here. And if you take a look here, we've got a cross section through the upper limb here. Now, as you can see, the compact bone, you can definitely see the thickness of that shaft, but that soft yellowy tissue inside, that I've got the probe in here, is the actual yellow bone marrow. Now, yellow bone marrow is just another form of adipose tissue. Adipose just meaning fat. So energy storage, and we have a lot of different places for energy storage. Now, some of you may have even eaten yellow bone marrow. Well, not on humans, because that would be weird, but from other animals. And I've never had it, but I've heard some people really like it. And you can throw that in the comments below if you like it and tell us what it tastes like. But as far as this essential function, yes, we need energy storage. But is that what I was referring to at the beginning of the video when I was talking about some of these functions that are essential for life and for you to stay alive? No, that we're gonna have to take a look at another portion of the inside of bone. And we're gonna use Jeffrey's femur here to zoom in and take a look at that. So in order for us to go deeper to the inside of bone tissue, we're gonna take a look at the back side of Jeffrey's thigh bone. Or for you anatomy geeks, that'd be the posterior aspect of the head of the femur. Now this isn't gonna take very much for us to get to the deeper bone layer or the deeper bone tissue because remember, the ends or the epiphysis of long bones, that compact bone was only paper thin. And if you look right above my finger there, you can see some of that compact bone is missing. Now, even this zoomed in angle that we have here still doesn't do the inside of your bones justice. So we're gonna zoom in even further right to this spot. Look at how amazing this deeper bone tissue is. Obviously, this is gonna be deep to the compact bone, and this deeper bone tissue is referred to as spongy bone. Now, it kind of makes sense if you look at it, more porous and kind of resembles a sponge. Now, those little beams of bone that are making up the spongy bone, they would continue deeper into the bone tissue. It's just we're so zoomed in right now that it's hard to bring those into focus. But if I adjust the camera settings and you kind of look in the background there, you should see those other little beams come into focus. And that's pretty amazing to see that. And let me come back into the original picture here. Now, you've heard me mention the phrase little beams a few times. So we should probably talk about these little structures in some more detail. So these little beams of bone are actually referred to as trabeculae. Trabeculae translates to weird little beams. Now, at first glance, the trabeculae might look like they're oriented in all sorts of random directions. But remember at the beginning of the video, I said we were gonna look at some amazing structures and architecture? The trabeculae are not oriented randomly. They are actually precisely oriented in the direct lines of stress that your bones experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And they can even build up and change throughout life based on activity and even disease states. Like for example, when you go from a little tiny baby, not moving, to crawling, up to walking and running, the trabeculae will build up and change based on the forces that the body experiences based on those different movement patterns of no movement to crawling to walking and running around like a little crazy toddler. But we also need to talk about the spaces in between the trabeculae. Found in the spaces between your trabeculae is something extremely important to multiple body functions, and that is red bone marrow. That's a bit different from the yellow bone marrow that we talked about earlier, which was another form of adipose tissue but your red bone marrow produces your blood cells. Now we say that the red bone marrow produces three different lines or three different types of blood cells. Let's start with the first being the red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes. Erith just means red, site means cell. We also have the white blood cells or the leukocytes produced in the red bone marrow. Leuk just means white, again, site meaning cell. And the third would be the platelets, which are also known as thrombocytes. Throm just means clot. And if we look at the functions of these cells, we can see how vitally important red bone marrow is. Erythrocytes or red blood cells, they're designed to carry oxygen to all the tissues throughout the body. And everything about these cells is designed to carry oxygen. The shape, the hemoglobin inside, these are actually some few cells in the human body that actually even get rid of the nucleus because they want more room to carry as much oxygen as possible. The white blood cells, we can all agree, are pretty important because they are involved in immunity for things like fighting off infections, tissue repair. So again, vitally important to our health and well-being. 
The third cell line we mentioned were platelets or thrombocytes. Throm again meant clot. So these are going to get involved in clotting your blood. So if, say like you get a cut on your arm, these are the cells that get in, form the clot and stop the bleeding. So again, bone marrow being so vitally important because of the production of these different cell types. Now, one thing we have to mention about this is I kind of want people to think about bone tissue sometimes gets thought of as dead tissue. I don't know why I just have noticed that amongst my students. It's probably because the bones tend to remain long after somebody passes away. We use them at Halloween, but bone tissues are very much alive. And as we mentioned, are constantly changing and modifying throughout life. So this spongy bone, has an extremely important function, not only to deal with stresses and strains that our bones experience, but also to protect that red bone marrow. And one thing we also have to think about, where do we want all these blood cells? All of these blood cells have to circulate throughout the bloodstream throughout the entire body. So it's kind of cool to think about is that the bones have to have little holes or passageways for blood vessels to pass in, run through those spaces of the red bone marrow, pick up those blood cells, and then take them out of the bone so they can distribute throughout the whole body. Now, just keep in mind, as the blood does go into the bone, it'll also distribute nutrients so the bone can stay alive, as well as pick up all of those different blood cells. And one last thing I wanna mention, you actually will not find red bone marrow in the spongy bone throughout the entire skeleton. You'll actually only find it in the spongy bone of specific bones in the adult. Those would be the sternum and the rib cage. You also find red bone marrow in the spine or the, what we also refer to as the vertebral column. Also it's in the hip bones and the proximal ends of the humerus and the femur. So what's filling the spongy bone in all of the other regions? Well, that would be some more yellow bone marrow because who doesn't love to store a little bit of extra fat? So there was our deep dive into the depths of your bones and hopefully you guys learned something new and interesting. And speaking of learning, if you haven't noticed, we at the Institute of Human Anatomy might be what you would call a little bit geeky because we love learning new things all of the time. And that's why we love associating with those who also promote education and lifelong learning. It benefits us as well as our viewers. And that's why I wanna say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive online learning platform for STEM subjects. Those subjects would be math, science, logic, and computer science. Brilliant is constantly pushing the envelope of learning and education by creating new courses that are challenging, but also interactive and fun. And those are the best combinations for the learning to stick and you to apply it to your daily lives. They just recently created a new course on logic and we could all probably use a little bit more logic in our lives, but especially applying logic to the sciences. The holiday season is also upon us. So a brilliant subscription might be a great gift for a child, a niece, nephew, sibling, or maybe you might have a know-it-all aunt or uncle that might need some refreshers on the factoids or at least the accuracy of the factoids that they spew out at all the holiday gatherings. If you're interested, visit brilliant.org IHA or click the link in the description below and they'll give the first 200 people 20% off their yearly subscription. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.